Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for uh, being here and all you all, uh, everyone does in this room, for families in North Carolina and children in North Carolina. I do have with me today two special guests, two absolutely brilliant young people. One of them happens to be my granddaughter, Holly Del Grandy, and her friend from Ashboro, Dakota Lassiter. They're, they're kind of what we're all talking about, I think. You may think you don't wake up talking things about economic development like we do in commerce, but uh, you do because you wake up thinking about education. <coughs> education and economic development is absolutely linked together. Uh, I am what is called a fanatic about education. Uh, I work for a lady who's not a fanatic. She's mild, calm about education, doesn't say very much about it. Well, by comparison, I think I'm a fanatic. She, most of y'all think she is too. Uh, let me tell you why I'm a fanatic. I grew up on a place called Reap Road in Stanley County. Stanley County, and that, and that on a farm, uh, uh, near a lot. Uh, not, not at a lot, but near a lot. And uh, I grew up in a loving family. But, that, but education really was not a habit for that family. Uh, my dad, uh, uh, stopped in the seventh grade, my mother stopped in the eighth grade. Uh, so I came along and I was in that family, again a very loving family, but education was just not a habit, not a priority. Uh, my mother was from a large family and she had a sister who was working for a while in a company called Cannon Mills, a real uh, a, a company we all heard a lot about. She lost her job and back in those times when family member loses a job. She was not married. So she was kind of almost destitute. So you bring family members in. That's what you do. So she came down to the farm when I was about two years old, uh, about a year and a half, and she lived with us for four and a half years. Well, she was what I call my educational angel. Because she didn't have a job. She didn't have a husband. So she adopted Keith Frisco, basically, at least educationally. So every day, we work together. I learned to read. I learned all the stuff that you learn now in early childhood education. So I had a one-on-one -on -one educational angel. And if you're lucky, you had a teacher, you had a professor that was your educational angel somewhere along the way. Well, my educational angel was Agatha Hartson. And she was there with me every day. And she went back to Kannapolis City went back to work when I started the first grade. So I had an individual tutor, my educational angel, all those years. Well, back then, one I did not even have kindergarten. Every hall was that. We didn't have kindergarten. It was very much our childhood education formally. But I had it. I had it in spades with my educational angel. You know what happened? When I went to the first grade, I was prepared. You know what I was, was neat about that? I liked succeeding. It was fun. I enjoyed being first in the class. I wasn't first in the class because I was smarter than the rest of you. I had that preparation. I had an angel. So that created, made me be a fanatic about education. That made me love to succeed. I felt good about myself. I felt good about succeeding. And somehow we need to, as those, the great example of those learners that were participating they felt good about what they were doing. I was in those classes and saw people falling asleep. Yeah, I saw a lot of those classes come along. You know what? You don't feel good about doing that. You may joke about it, but you really don't feel good about it. Well, I felt good about the first grade and the second grade. I, because I enjoyed, again, as I said before, uh, being uh, acclaimed as a good student because I was prepared. Uh, I've tried to give back. I think, again, my fanaticism goes to volunteering education. I've been a trustee at Piper College for life, at least forever, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, chairman of that board. I was on the Ashworth City School Board for 10 years. I was in uh, Randolph Community College, the UNC School of Public Health. Every educational board I could find that they would take, and some probably wouldn't. But I, I, uh, I wanted to be on because I wanted to try to instill as a, perhaps a businessman 
and the business orientation and that fanaticism that I have about education. Um, that's uh, really, if we can get that fervor or that intensity or again, be an educational fanatic, perhaps we can um, we can install in today's world and, and connect economic development with uh, education. Well, a few things that I think we try to do at Congress in my time here, which I think is very important uh, as we move forward. First, I've said we need to look outwardly. We cannot continue to look inwardly at North Carolina. We need to look outwardly at our markets, outwardly at our competition, outwardly at what we do. That's a fancy way of saying we need to be more international. Because just as we've seen in commerce, where uh, last year over 25% of the new businesses you attracted in North Carolina were international based uh, foreign direct investments, uh, we now have over 3,600 significant international companies in North Carolina. Without the international element, we are, we're not going to make it, we're not going to compete. One reason I think I have my job. I know it is, is our little company was a textile company, boy that's traditional. It was a company that was started from nothing, yet thrived in the, in the textile debacle. Why? Because we were international. When others were crying, the sky is falling about trade, we embraced it, moved forward, invested overseas, and we had basically from a balance sheet no reason to do it, we did it anyway, because that was the way to succeed. And We've got to take that attitude in North Carolina. Recently, we've announced uh, Chiquita Siemens, another an artist, which is a, a, a Danish firm. Again, that's are examples of the international element that is here, and that's how we have to think as North Carolina. Uh, someone asked me, what's the most educational thing I've ever done? Well, uh, the one single thing is probably international travel. And that needs to be more and more of our curriculum, of our exposure to our students. Uh, from Reek Road, which is a long way for international travel. Uh, when I interviewed for a job in Baltimore, Maryland at 21, that was the first time I ever traveled outside of North Carolina. I thought it was a real, I thought that was a foreign trip. But uh, again, travel and exposure to the world by more students, and we have many partnerships in North Carolina that allows us to, to do, do that. Uh, we have so many partners in so many things. Uh, that's one thing that, as we talk to prospects and consultants, they continue to say that North Carolina does better than other states, and that's called collaborate. We work together with county, city, and state. Uh, partners involved here, uh, I've got a list of them, of course, DPI, community colleges, uh, rural center, uh, uh, you know, the Center for International Understanding, the North Carolina STEM program uh, that goes on and on. But again, uh, that that is one particular constant we must have as we move forward. Uh, I've taken uh, Governor Purdue to China twice. We're going again. We've had 11 international trips that I've been on as Secretary of Commerce there. Again, no substitute for our economy and our state to do that. So again, that's where my, my focus is. Again, children are the most important product. So these two young people with me today will learn a little something today, and I'll, I'll contribute a little bit and give back. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. Thank you for caring about our economic future. You may think that you're educated, but you are economists and people working on our economic future for North Carolina. Thank you very much.